welcome to Theotrade. This is Don Kaufman. In this video, we're going to be discussing a little bit about implied volatility percentiles. Maybe even a better name for that is implied volatility kind of ranking. So in previous videos, I've, I've discussed quite a bit about implied volatility, which of course is the annual standard deviation Okay. And really the implied volatility that you're looking at on the right hand side of the screen um, on Thinkorswim's trade tab, that implied volatility of course is derived from averaging options within a, uh, within a given chain. So if you look at like, you know, here in Nike, for example, <clears throat> the DS fives, there's 22 days prior to expiration over to the right hand side of your screen, it'll say 30, 5.69%. So that's the average implied volatility. And that's that implied volatility. If you go here to the information layouts, options, theoreticals, and Greeks up to implied vol. So that's, again, that average implied volatility. And that's an averaging model. If you added up all the out of the money puts and all the out of the money calls and divided by whatever number of puts and calls, okay, you come out to, you know, right in the neighborhood of 35.69. <clears throat> that's that's your implied volatility, which kind of denotes risk in the option markets, which can be extrapolated is, you know, movement, of course, to the stock. So when people think of volatility, they always think the annualized, again, standard deviation of past stock price movement, but that's actually historical volatility. Okay. So what we often look at, though, is the implied volatility and that implied volatility you can use implied volatility again to extrapolate like what the marketplace like here in Nike views risk to be for instance 22 days out and that happens to be again 35.69 percent but when you just look at the implied volatility on Nike and you say yeah 35 percent vol yeah I don't really know what that means <laughs> what do you mean you don't know what it means? It means 35% fall, but how do you know if that's high or how do you know if that's low? You know, you can look over at a chart, and if you do look at a chart, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, Nike, Nike's moving around a little bit. you got to also realize, like, oh, boy, it looks like, you know, maybe some earnings announcements are coming out. There's even, there's a two-for-one split coming. Yay. So it's going to make $130 stock with some really strange stock, you know, uh, strike. So it becomes, you know, a 60 some odd dollar stock in just the next couple of weeks. But there's also, again, there's earnings on the horizon, which can raise risk to a degree. But the question really is, okay, in introducing this, implied volatility percentile, first and foremost, to find the IV ranking. I'm going to explain exactly what that is. Let's first find it. It's found, okay, on the bottom, again, the bottom of the Thinkorswim trade tab, okay, open up today's option statistics. Under today's option statistics, clearly, okay, you can see the IV, okay, percentile. And again, I think percentile is, a, is kind of the wrong word. It's more of a ranking. What that basically amounts to is you can see the 52 week low IV and again implied volatility is always quoted in percentage terms right so it's like you know 29.8 percent okay and then it says but this is a hundred percent but then right above that it says point you know one two five and point three seven three and what that really amounts to is that's the same thing as saying Hopefully everybody recognizes it's like 37.3%. Okay, so that's the highest implied volatility that's been seen inside of what? Inside of Nike anytime in the last 52 weeks. So this is a 52 week you know, high 52-week low of implied volatility. And all the IV ranking does is it says, where are we in between? So if you look, if you look over here, like the highest it's been is about 37.3%. The lowest it's been is what? About 12%. And then this, this IV ranking just says, where is it? Like on the barometer of implied volatility. 
or thermometer of implied volatility. Whatever works for you, right? And right now, it's, it's all the way up here. It's at the hundredth, okay? A hundredth kind of ranking in this particular case. And if it was all the way down here at like 12%, it would be at the zeroth. Ah, I like to make things up. It's kind of fun that way. So when you look now at implied volatility, okay, it's a way to kind of in your head say that like, Nike right now, is it risky? Well, looking at the IV percentile, it's actually saying, yeah, it's risky. This is the risky it's been. It, it's, it's actually saying that it's literally at the riskiest it has been any time in the last 52 weeks. <clears throat> All right? It's the, it's the exact opposite, maybe what you may have expected initially. So then you can go over to a chart, and another way to describe this on the chart is on the chart, you know, there's nothing up here in terms of price that's going to show how risky, okay, the future of Nike happens to be. So what you want to do is you're going to go over to studies, okay, and you're going to add a study and go down under volatility studies and right up to implied vol. So under implied volatility, and lots of trading applications, of course, are going to have implied volatility. What I'm doing now is I'm just showing you this, this happens to be a nine month chart we could open it up to a full year just by quickly you know dropping to a full year over here so you can see this is the implied volatility the ups and downs of implied volatility for the full year and here we are right now okay and this is another way like of just visually seeing what this ranking kind of does so down in this level okay that's like the lowest implied volatility it saw up in this neighborhood, this is like the highest implied volatility we've seen. And right here, right now, this is why, okay, because it's the highest implied volatility we've seen, that's why it gets the ranking of 100. If this is the lowest implied volatility seen, that's why it gets a ranking basically of zero. Now, in implied volatility ranking, there can never be anything below zero, and never can there be ranking above 100, because it's ranking. Like, and, and the way to think of this, like, you could be at the bottom of your class, or you could be at the top of your class. Okay, but you can't be at 150% all right, of your class. Now, one of the issues with implied volatility ranking is, so now we're at the 100th percentile okay, of, of ranking in terms of Nike's risk. It's like the risk is it's been. It doesn't mean, though, that risk can't go higher. Risk could go higher. The volatility could go from 37%, and it could go to 50%. Okay, and then what happens to the volatility okay ranking well there's one other way to think of like the volatility ranking the volatility ranking okay to me works kind of like a speedometer <clears throat> so here's the volatility right now okay it's pegged at a hundred and then it can come down it can go to like you know 80 it can come down over here to 70 all right and then obviously like up here would be zero but when your speedometer starts going boom you just what we call bury the needle and the needle is when the speedometer gets going right into 100 but once it hits 100 your car may be able to accelerate <laughs> beyond 100 miles an hour Okay. Unfortunately, the needle is already buried. It can't go any further. And the needle being buried means it can't go past that, you know, 100. So don't get all punchy just because, for instance, something like Nike has the 100th percentile on it. Yeah, it's the riskiest it's seen in the last 52 weeks, but it doesn't mean the volatility can't necessarily go higher. And you can see it fluctuate. Now it went to like 99%. You're like, oh, be still my heart. Okay. And volatility can fluctuate up and down. So keep that in mind with this IV ranking. Of course, there's also ways to scan for IV rankings over here, but we just want to kind of get down right now that big context of really what that IV rank happens to be <clears throat> and that it kind of gives us a baseline and we'll, we'll switch, like, you know, we'll, we'll kind of just switch from Nike for a moment. And by the way, if you're questioning, like, why why would Nike's risk be so high? Well, yeah, it has earnings that came out. That and the fact that I think they just signed LeBron James to a $500 million lifetime contract. So when he is 70-something years old, 
he will still be selling sneakers, along with Michael Jordan, who will probably be 100 by then. Nevertheless, uh, just to, to compare and contrast uh, from Nike, we'll go look at uh, another product, and we'll go over to the Spiders. And the reason I bring up the Spiders is the S&P 500 ETF. And once again, we'll kind of scroll down, we'll go to IV ranking, and you'll see it's at the 25th percentile, meaning the implied volatility, it's not even middle of the road. It's kind of low. Think about IV, okay, in a whole new light. Don't just look at the implied volatility. Look at where your implied volatility is ranked. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us here at Theotrade.